Hi everyone, Linda Reed Enova. I hope you're doing incredibly well today. Today's Ask Linda video is all about Facebook. It's about those moments and times where Facebook stops you doing something or marks your posts as spam. So I wanted to cover some of those topic areas and some of those key points that might see you not being able to use Facebook in the best way possible that you would like to. The other thing that I'd like to mention while you're here is this is your first time popping by my YouTube channel or popping by my Facebook page. Make sure you like or subscribe and give me a thumbs up especially if you like the video so that I know this is the type of content that you want me to create for you now and further on down the track. So okay, let's look at Facebook. Facebook is a great platform. It's a free platform that allows us to get in there and no negotiate and do all those sorts of things and have a network within a, a online community. And it's fantastic. It's where we run the business, business, business group. And the business, business, business group is where some of these topics are been popping up. It's either being people not being able to post in groups. It's people being not being able to send messages. It's posts being flagged as spam. Um, or its comments being flagged as spam. So they're the particular areas of what I want to comment about today. There are a couple of things that also pop up in business, business, business about Facebook profiles that people don't know. Okay, so let's cover some of those for the moment. Let's go with the Facebook profile. First of all, your Facebook profile needs to be under your name. Okay, it needs to be your name, who you are in real life. <laughs> That's what the part, part of Facebook's terms of service ask you to do is your have your Facebook account under a real person's identity and not have two of them. Okay, so you can't have a Facebook account for a personal profile and a profile is is what the account is it's your profile you can't have a Facebook profile for you personally and then you for the business if you want to have a business profile on Facebook it needs to be a page so I have my Linda Reed and of a personal profile with my friends and family connect and where I pop stuff into BBB and then I have my Linda Reed and of a business person page where other people can connect with me, business owners, those types of people that maybe aren't in my closer inner circle, that's their, their connection point. That's how I have the two profiles and the two pages and that's how Facebook want you to run it. The other thing about Facebook profiles is they're your profile. You're responsible for it. You face, When you sign up to Facebook, part of your terms and services are you don't can't give access to that Facebook profile to anyone else. You can't share your passwords with anyone else. So that Facebook profile needs to stay in the control of your hands. That means no VAs posting in groups on your behalf or anything like that because if you are found out that someone else is logging into your account and you know how Facebook knows, they track the IP addresses, it will see your account either restricted, blocked, or actually taken away from Facebook. And that means you lose everything. You lose all your groups, you lose all your pages, you lose all your profiles, and you no one wants that happening in any way, shape, or form. So that's a couple of things about personal profiles. Two key things to remember, it needs to be under your name, need no duplicate profiles, and make sure that it's you using your personal profile at all times according to Facebook's terms of services. And this will see your personal profile stay a little bit safer and a little bit more you in amongst all those things and guys you know personally I only want to connect with people on their personal profile especially in groups that are them that are the people actually posting on their own behalf so there we go there's my tips about Facebook profiles the other one I want to talk about is Facebook posts and being flagged as spam so I've done a whole video on being posts being flagged as spam but basically what it is it's you're sharing the same content over and over and over again in groups and with the Facebook algorithm goes not nah, too much or too much posting and it either stops you from being able to post in groups or it flags it in a spam category for the admins of the group to review. Now, at that stage in time, your post isn't being seen and most admins will look at it and go, well, if they're spamming groups, do we really want this content in our group? In BBB's point of view, I've seen some really good posts land in our spam filter because someone's just come out and splattered Facebook within five or 10 minutes or even within an hour of the same post in multiple different groups. So look at mixing up your post content so you don't be seen as flagged as spam. And if you are gonna share the same thing, change up the images, add some video, add some different text to introduce the link, change it up. And that is what Facebook is looking for. Human interaction that is changed and makes that in their introduction so that they know that a person is actually putting that content out there. The other thing about spam is comments. Comments get flagged as spam, especially if they're one word comments, or if you're using the same comment too much, or you're just posting gifts in your comments all the time. So make sure that you're not um, doing too much is basically what I'm saying there, is make sure that your comments are thoughtful and they're relevant to the point and then they won't be flagged as spam as much. So you, you'll see them. There's like threads out there. There's there's um, opportunities to follow on Instagram and we even run them on BBB Let's Connect. And it's, you know, like, can you like my page too in the page link? Don't do it. Just get in there and interact with everyone and know that people will take part and like your pages if, they're, if they like what you're doing. You don't have to go, hey, like me back. 
because the reality of it is that's sounding desperate anyway. And number two, it's making the person feel guilty if they haven't had time, time to get through the list. And number three, it's going to flag you as spam on Facebook. And who wants to be known as a Facebook spammer? Let's put it that way. Okay, the other one that I want to talk to you about with comments on spam is when people are copying and pasting. So if you copy and paste the same comment in multiple times, that's going to see you flagged as spam. If you're acting too fast, so this is where the copy and pasting really comes into play. If you're posting too fast or you're commenting too fast or too rapidly, it'll trigger the Facebook spam algorithm. And it'll also most probably stop you from being able to comment or participate in groups. Same thing if you're posting too fast. So if you're copying and pasting and posting things into multiple groups, like that. Uh, that's my sound effects for today. See, didn't hire a sound guy, but put some sound effects in. Um, if you're doing those sorts of things, then that's going to see you flagged as spam as well. And that's not what we want to do. Okay. The other one is the messaging system. Okay, I am a big fan of Facebook messages when they're required, whether that's the admin of a Facebook group sending you a message going, hey, do you know that this is not how the group works or something like that? Or, you know, thanks for joining us. But it's a case of following Facebook's terms of service. If you send the same message over and over and over again, it's going to set off the algorithm to see you as a spammer. So if you're sending a welcome message to everyone who likes your page, for example, that's going to happen. That's that was to be the situation set up. If you're sending a bulk sales message, which we see happening from time to time, people do do it on Facebook, then that is going to see you flagged as spam as well. And it's going to trigger off the algorithm and the Facebook algorithm is going to stop you from being able to send messages. Now that can be a temporary ban or it can be a permanent ban. And the last thing you want to do is not being able to message and send messages with your friends and family. Cause I, you know, love to communicate with people via Facebook. Facebook. I communicate with my clients via Facebook, my, my family via Facebook, and my friends via Facebook. So I want the messenger system to be able to work for me. So it's about protecting these assets that you've got within your Facebook account. So guys, when it comes to messaging, be creative, think of what you're going to actually share, and only message people you really need to message, and don't send the same message over and over. And that should see your Facebook account allow you to be able to keep sending messages. Now, I've been a Facebook user for many, many years. The algorithms change, the systems change, the rules change, but the terms of service are pretty much very standard. Be yourself, don't do what a human wouldn't do, so don't copy and paste and be too rapid. And don't try and check the system. And if you follow those rules, you'll see your Facebook account being active and being able to use on a regular and ongoing basis. Facebook is an amazing platform. I'd like to thank the creators of Facebook because we do do a lot of business via Facebook. And I would like to remind everyone, Facebook's free. You know, you get to use a network on this service for free. So we need to play just like anyone else's businesses and groups, groups by the rules and follow the guidelines that Facebook give us to be active participants in their community. Thanks for joining me and I hope you found these Facebook tips useful. If you did, hit subscribe. Bye.